G'day, Jordan here from Finding Lotus Yoga and today I want to share with you my story, a story that's very close to my heart and has been a joy to create and brings happiness to me every time I read it. And I hope it brings happiness to everyone else who crosses his path. Enos in the Now, a story I created when I was about five. Those of you who've been following me for some time have met Enos before and hopefully have been waiting for me to get this book published. I've been waiting too. I've decided not to wait for it to be published anymore. I'm going to share the story with you today via this means. It's a story that I came up with when I was about five with my mum and decided to recreate as a gift to my mum to tell her or show her how much she means to me and how much she's shown me and how much love I have for her and for everyone who is part of my family. I hope you enjoy this story as much as I've enjoyed creating it and continue with this journey as I seek to get it published. But I'm not going to wait for it to get published in print. I'm sure it'll be on bookshelves at some stage across the world and in the hearts of many. But it's 2014 and I can tell you this story via YouTube. <laughs> so here goes. Enos in the Now, written and illustrated by Jordan David Thackeray. And bear with me if I make any mistakes, please forgive me, I just have to keep going. Once in a valley laid a bed, a bed of eggs that rested. Today the sun would rise and the eggs would hatch and lots of little caterpillars would awake. The caterpillars ate the leaf they once called their bed and with full stomachs set out to explore the valley. Among them was a curious and bright little caterpillar called Enos. Ready for discovery, Enos walked along with adventure in his sights. He had not gotten far before, ouch, he had trodden on a prickle. Enos did not like this and thought to himself, I don't want that to happen again. Enos looked down at his many feet. How could he protect them all from prickles? He would have to find some shoes, but where would he find so many? Treading cautiously, he began to look for shoes. Not far along the way, he came across a very pretty butterfly. She had bright, delicate wings and was resting gracefully on a long stem of grass. Innes decided to approach her and ask if she knew of anywhere he might find so many shoes. Politely introducing himself, he kindly asked her what her name was. My name is Sophia, she replied. You look puzzled. Enos explained about the prickle and that he was now looking for shoes to protect his feet. He asked if she knew of anywhere he might find some. Sophia looked at all his feet and replied, You might never find that many shoes, but it doesn't matter. Prickles come and go. Even if you did find that many shoes, for all your feet, trust me, you won't need them. Really? Enos said. Yes, really. Just play, learn, have fun, discover and enjoy yourself, Sophia said. Sophia was the most elegant creature Enos had ever seen, and with the gentle flutter of her graceful wings, she was off, dancing through the sky into the distance. Enos watched Sophia fly away. He considered what she had said, but when he remembered that nasty prickle, Enos was too scared of stepping on another one to follow Sophia's advice. So he continued on his quest. Enos passed through tunnels, walked along creeks, went over and under branches, looking everywhere but found no shoes. As the sun began to set and the moon and the stars appeared, tired after a long day of shoe searching, Enos stopped to rest. He spent the night dreaming where he might possibly find so many shoes. The next morning, Enos woke up and spent the day searching high and low for shoes. He looked up, he looked on, he looked in, he looked under. He looked around. Enos looked everywhere he could, but still, no shoes. It started to rain, but desperately Enos continued in search of shoes. After another unsuccessful day of shoe hunting, in the rain, Enos began to feel extremely tired. Enos looked up at the evening's new moon. It was time for bed. He crawled to the tallest branch of the tallest tree in the forest and laid his head on the leaf. While preparing for sleep, Enos thought of Sophia. He remembered how wise she seemed. He reflected on what she had told him. Play, learn, have fun, discover and enjoy yourself. He decided that tomorrow he would not go looking for shoes. 
Tomorrow he would take Sophia's advice. He went to sleep not dreaming of shoes, but dreaming of discovery and adventure. Our friend Enos slept and slept. He slept a lot longer than usual. The rain had cleared and the sun was high in the sky when Enos woke the next day. He felt strange and different. He had never slept in so late. Stretching and yawning, Enos rolled out of bed, excited about the day ahead. But today things were different. Very different. Enos slipped and tumbled from the branch. Ah, he cried. Terrified, he shut his eyes and fell and waited for the thud, the crash, the bang. With his eyes shut tight, he waited and waited and waited. After a while, he had still hit, he had still not hit the ground. He thought to himself, I must have been higher up that tree than I remember. He bravely opened his eyes one at a time. Enos saw that he wasn't falling. In fact, he was floating upward and he was flapping his wings. Yes, Enos had wings. He had, in fact, turned into a very handsome butterfly. He would no longer need so many shoes. He had a lot less feet. In fact, he would no longer need any shoes at all because now he could fly. Enos took a deep breath, gave the world a big smile, flapped his wings and flew away, ready to enjoy each present moment living in the now. The End I hope you enjoyed and I hope you read the stuff below and take care of yourself, take care of each other, look inward kindly so that you might reflect that same kindness outwardly to those around you, those you love and those you don't know. Namaste. G'day, thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoyed Enos in the Now. Help me give this guy his wings and get him onto bookshelves around the world, into the hearts of many, both young and old. We can all do with a reminder every now and then that living in the moment is really all we need, and seeing the world through the eyes of the child is, real, is the real gift in this life. So take care of yourself, take care of each other, invest in your child's education, read books, and I'll see you on the yoga mat. Namaste.